Do you want to learn how to study the Bible, to hear God speaking to you, to get to know his son Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit? Well, maybe you have struggled with this before, but put your concerns and your fears aside because you can do it and we're going to show you how. Hello and welcome back to Bites of Holiness. Uh, this is Molly and Nigel from Precept UK. Up to this point in week two, we have spent a lot of time focusing on the ungodly. We've seen what Jude teaches about them, how they're described, and we've also looked at cross-references to understand them better. These are men who have crept in unnoticed into our church fellowships. We've also thought about application and asked ourselves the question, um, you know, do any of their actions or their beliefs, um, do they, uh, have they crept into our lives? Are we reflecting any of those things? Mm. So we've prayed already, so be sure that you have before we turn to day five. So let's get started. Okay, so day five, uh, week two of the study of Jude. Hopefully you've got one of these books We're on page 108. So here we go. Now comes a pleasant switch. <clears throat> that would be a pleasant switch from the ungodly. We're going to read Jude chapter, uh, sorry, verses 17 to 25, and we're going to list what we learn about the beloved. This time, watch out for any instructions. You might want to write instruction in the margin of your Bible next to any verse where you find one listed. As you observe verses 20 and 21, look at the specific instructions uh, tell them how they are to keep themselves in the love of God. And are any of these instructions ones that we ourselves need to put into action? So, <clears throat> let us uh, let me read it through to start with. Verses 17 to 25, and we're going to make a list about all that we learn about uh, the beloved. So here we go. But you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. That they were saying to you, in the last time, there will be mockers following after their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones who cause divisions, they're worldly minded, devoid of the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Have mercy on some who are doubting, save others, snatching them out of the fire, and on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Amen. So make sure that you've got your notebook and you can go back to where you began your list on the beloved. We've obviously already marked the beloved, so you can just add some facts uh, that we learn. So let's look at our text. And uh, it said this time, watch for any instructions. So as we go through, let's see if we can see any instructions as well. It says, but you beloved, so you'd want to put on your list the word beloved. So remember to put verse 17 and the word beloved. And then we learn about them that they ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So put this on your list, ought to remember words spoken beforehand by the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what was it that they had to remember? What was told them? And what was told them was that in the last time, there will be mockers following after their own ungodly lusts. That's what they had to remember. 
So we learn that they're called uh, beloved again and that they ought to remember the words that were spoken to them. Um, the next place we see something about them is in verse 20. Mm -hmm. And yet again, we see that they're described as being beloved. They are beloved. And then we see what appears initially to be an instruction, which is building themselves up on their most holy faith. So make sure that you get that down on your list, building themselves up um, on their most holy faith. And the second thing is praying in the Holy Spirit. Spirit. So that's what verse 20 tells us about them. So those sound like instructions, but just hang on for just a second, because verse 21, I think, is the instruction. It says, keep yourselves in the love of God. And then the um, final thing that we learn here is that they're waiting anxiously for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Now, I'm not a great scholar of English grammar at all. Um, I'll let you into a secret. I failed my English grammar exam when I was uh, 12 or 13, and um, I, I struggle with, with English. But I believe that the words building, praying, and waiting are what are called participles, and they support the main verb. And the main verb is to keep yourselves, to keep. So I'm going to put an I in the margin here, this is the instruction here, okay? And in fact, actually, I think we should have put an instruction under yeah. verse 17 as yeah. well. So let me just go back and do that. So I'm going to put an I for instruction over or, or next to verse 17. That was the first instruction. And here we have got keep yourselves in the love of God. And how do they do that? They do that by building themselves up on their most holy faith, praying in the Spirit and waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. So make sure you've got those uh, things down on your list. Now, those things really, I suppose in the context, are how they are to contend earnestly for the faith. I mean, that's the instruction to them, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yep. So those are personal instructions to them about what they should be doing and how they can um, keep themselves in the love of God. Yeah, we're specifically asked in verses 20, mm -hmm. um, and 21 look at the specific mm. instructions that tell them how to keep themselves in the love of god and are there any of these instructions that we need to put into action so these so are the the building themselves up there we go so what about us are yeah. we to to do that i think it's fascinating you've got building you've got praying you've got keeping verse 21 and you've got keep, waiting wait. well it's keep on there yeah and keep then, and, and waiting. waiting so uh, i think you know, you just look at those verses. So how are we to keep ourselves, uh, build ourselves up in our most holy faith? How are we to do that? Well, well how are we to keep ourselves in the love of God? By building ourselves up, isn't it, on um, our most holy faith? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, and how, how do we build ourselves up in our most holy faith? Mm. You know, I'm asking myself that question. How, how, mm. how do you do that? How do I do that? Um, well, I think it's, it's so significant that Jude said in verse 3, he said, contend earnestly for the faith. And so here it's building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Mm. So we do that through what we're doing today, yeah. through reading the word, mm. studying the word, um, getting to know um, more about um, what is our faith, the common faith, which is in the word of God, the word of God isn't it? Yeah. So we're building ourselves up on and, it by and, you know, studying it. I love that word building. Mm. You think of the word building, you know, you, you, in order to build a building, you've got to build a foundation mm -hmm. and building takes time. Mm -hmm. But it's just, a, I just think it's a, there are foundations that we need to know and then we need to continue to build, continue to learn. Yeah. And uh, that is how we're going to keep ourselves in the love of God, by and knowing. It's, and it's faith. all in the word of God, isn't it? And, and it's in the word of God. Mm -hmm. So, What so do you I, think? Absolutely. Love to hear your comments. Please put them below. And... Uh, and the second thing um, is praying in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. What's our habit of, what's our prayer life like? Mm. I think that's a really good question. Yeah, and do we just go through the motions by rote? Um, 
or actually we sensitive to the Holy Spirit and who he may want us to be praying for, what he may want us to be praying about. You know, um, I've been in situations before where I have been praying, the Lord's just put somebody on my heart right away. Mm -hmm. And uh, I prayed for them or even maybe been in touch with them, phoned them, written them a letter, I don't know. But I think that's really important to be sensitive as we pray to the leading of the Holy Spirit as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, two more instructions in verse 21. Yes, yeah, so the main was to keep ourselves in the love of God, and mm. we do that by the, doing these things, but waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. And I have to say, how I'm not very good at um, living on earth with heaven in mind. In other words, I'm, I'm, I don't live, and this is a challenge to me remembering that Jesus is coming back mm -hmm. and because mm. he's coming back and he's coming back soon I need to live my life in a way that's going to please him when he sees me yeah. so and it's an anxious waiting isn't mm. it it's a being conscious of conscious the mercy of, yeah. of the Lord Jesus Christ and what mercy he has shown us yeah and the mercy that he bestows on us eternal life that's right and that's eternal life that begins today but yeah. it has eternal consequences yeah, doesn't it yeah it does so I think there's some beautiful things there mm -hmm. in just those mm -hmm. two verses verse 20 and 21 mm -hmm. um, and it says you know how how can we put these things into action well I think just to be conscious of them to know them to continue to be in mm -hmm. the Word of God to be you know, I can have an active prayer life mm -hmm. uh, we're exhorted to do that yeah. Um, yeah so I think there's some really practical things there now, uh, moving on in the in the book, it says um, keep or the word kept mm -hmm. is a key word in this epistle. We're to read through Jude again and mark every occurrence of its uh, of this okay. word. Uh, the original word, except in verse twenty four, is tereo. Now, tereo would be a Greek word which has been put into uh, English letters for us. That's actually called a transliteration. Um, took me ages to work out what that was, but that's what that is. And it means, this word means to watch over. And then it says, what do you learn from marking the words kept and keep? So you want to take a colour. Uh, I'm going to read it through. Molly will guide us through uh, where to mark and, and what to do. Just a little tip again. Um, as we come, to, we come to it the first time, I'm going to write in the margin that word and the definition just to remind me of actually what it means. So um, remember you've got a keyword bookmark. If we can just show that, Zach. Here we go. Um, kept or keep is like a little, I don't know, box, I suppose, um, uh, that you've, you've locked. Um, a locked little box. Doesn't matter what you do, different colour, as long as it's different to something else, and that's fine. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to mark that when we get to it. Here we go. Okay, so choose your colour, and uh, let's go. So Jude, this is back to the beginning. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are the called, beloved in God the Father, and kept. So let's just mark kept there. And so I'm going to just write in the margin here what that word is. And that word is um, tereo. And tereo means to watch over. It means to, to watch over. I'm not sure you can actually see that very clearly. There you go, that's better. To watch over. I've just written it in pencil, but you might want to write it in ink on your page. To watch over, okay? Okay, verse 2. May mercy and peace and love be multiplied to you, beloved. While I was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness, and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Now I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. And angels who did not keep... keep all right, so let's just mark the keep there. And another little tip for you. If it's a negative, 
because here the angel did not keep. I'm just going to put a line through it like that. That shows us that they did not keep. Okay, and angels who did not keep their own domain but abandoned their proper abode, he has kept. And let's just mark that again. Okay. In eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they in the same way as these indulged in gross immorality and went after strange flesh are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire okay. yet in the same way these men also by dreaming defile the flesh and reject authority and revile angelic majesties but michael the archangel when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of moses did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment that said, The Lord rebuke you. But these men revile the things which they do not understand and the things which they know by instinct, like unreasoning animals. By these things they are destroyed. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and for pay they have rushed headlong into the bearer, the... <laughs> The bearer. the bearer of Elam, <laughs> yeah. the, the error error of, of Balaam, Balaam, excuse me, and perish in the rebellion of Korah. These are the men who are hidden reefs in your love feasts when they feast with you without fear, caring for themselves, clouds without water, carried along by winds, autumn trees without fruit, doubly dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up their own shame like foam, wandering stars, for whom the black darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these men that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds, which they have done in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Verse 16. These are grumblers, finding fault, following after their own lusts, they speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. But you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they were saying to you, in the last time there will be mockers following after their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones who cause divisions, worldly minded, devoid of the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves. That's a word. Keep. In the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Have mercy on some who are doubting, save others, snatching them out of the fire. And on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you... Okay. ...from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. To the only God our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So let's go back okay. and look at those places where we marked um, mm -hmm. kept. And in verse uh, 1 we see that those who are the called, so these are the beloved, um, beloved in God, so they're the called, they're beloved in God the Father, and they are kept for Jesus Christ. So these, Jude is saying, they are watched over mm. for Jesus Christ. Now that is a beautiful truth, isn't it? <laughs> so not only are they called, they are beloved, and they are kept, they're watched over. And so... We'll, we'll think about that perhaps in our stop application at the end. Mm. Um, the next place we saw was in verse 6, and we see that angels 
did not keep their own domain, but they abandoned their proper abode. So they didn't watch over uh, their proper abode. They abandoned it. But uh, God has kept, he's watching over them in eternal bonds. Now, this is what we call a time reference. And actually, um, you can mark that with a green pen. I'm just going to get a green pen here. Um, it's one of those things that we're told to do in the instructions at the beginning. Um, that he's kept, God has kept in eternal bonds mm. under darkness for the judgment of the great day. And then the next place that we marked, where's the next place? I think it was verse 21, actually. Uh, moving on. Yeah, verse 21. Verse 21 yeah. We see here, this is the instruction to uh, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ mm. to eternal life. And there's another time reference there, so we can put another time reference in the margin there. So these are some um, beautiful truths. We're, we're, to, we're kept, but we're to keep ourselves. And then finally, uh, in verse 24, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. And we're going to look more about that in day six. But God is the one who's able to watch over us. Well, in fact, we'll come on to the meaning of that, <laughs> to keep us from stumbling. Yeah. So when you've marked a word, go back and just evaluate what you are learning about that word. Um, and so I think at this point, um, it, it says finally, um, note the contrast in these verses between the beloved and the ungodly living among them. So let's have a look here. And I think we're really looking at uh, verses 17 mm -hmm. through to 25 really. Yeah, okay. And the word but signifies a contrast, actually. So the way that I mark it, you don't have to do this, but um, I use, it's like a seesaw. I always use red for some reason. There we go, you just about see it. Um, so I underline it, and then I just do a slash. So it's a division. One is side is separated from the other. So what is the contrast here? Tell me more about that contrast. So you said it's between the beloved and it's the, and the, ungodly. And the ungodly living yeah. among them. Yeah, so we see in verse 17 that they're called beloved and that they ought to remember the words spoken beforehand by the apostles of the mm -hmm. Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. So they're to remember those things. Yeah. And there's a reason, and that is in verse 21, because in the last time there will be mockers mm -hmm. uh, who will be following after their ungodly lust. So, so there was an exhortation for them to remember the words spoken beforehand. They're warning you about this. And, and the sorts of men yeah. who are going to be following after their ungodly lusts, mm -hmm. and they're listed in verse 19. They're causing divisions, they're worldly-minded, yeah. uh, they're devoid of the Spirit. Um, and that is in a contrast to the beloved. Yeah. And the beloved, we know from our looking at it earlier, they're to build themselves up on their most holy faith. So they have a holy faith. They're praying in the Holy Spirit, which is very opposite to being ungodly. So, and you see, and so yeah. the others are devoid of the Spirit. They're devoid of the Spirit, but the beloved the are to be praying in the Spirit. Exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah, they are waiting anxiously for the mercy of the Lord to eternal life. That's what they're looking forward to. They're looking forward to to Jesus coming again. But we see in verse 19 that the ungodly are worldly minded. Their focus is not on what is to come, not Jesus returning. Yeah. It, it's just very present on pleasures for today, isn't and it? And also, um, verse 21, the beloved have to keep themselves in the love of God. And in verse 19, mm -hmm. these ungodly are causing divisions. And yeah. you know, if there's division, there's not, that's there's not, not really love. conducive to a lot of love right. going on. So there are actually some really simple, clear distinctions, contrasts, between between the um, the beloved and those uh, that he's warning them about, yeah. and actually that's one of the really it's a simple tool in inductive mm -hmm. Bible study, isn't it? To look for contrast, it's what we call an observation skill, observation tool, and it's something that you can do as you read through the scriptures yourself to look for the contrast and then make a note of them, and it just helps you to understand the text that much better. So it's a little tip, a little tool that you can use to look for those yeah. things, um, and. We weren't asked to do this in the instructions, but earlier in, in a previous ex uh, program, we were asked to work 
mark the word remind and I'm just going to mark the word remember here mm. um, because oh and I'm not doing it very neatly I'm afraid um, so just underline the word remember there um, because that's what they were to do they were to remember yeah. uh, the words that were yeah. spoken now stop let's think about how we can apply this to our lives mm. what is it and remember when we talk about stop we talk mm. about stopping talking to God, opening our heart and putting it into practice. And so we've already been asked to um, apply um, verses 20 and 21 to our lives. But as we finish our study, let's just remember again, what is it that we need to take away from here? Are we building ourselves up on the most holy faith? Are we spending time in Bible study? Well, yes, you are, because you're watching this program. Um, are we praying led by the Holy Spirit? Are we waiting anxiously? the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ you know and therefore because we know that Jesus is coming am I living my life in a way that contrasts the ungodly am I living my life in a way that is godly and um, just speaks of the love of God uh, uh, to the world around me mm. so thank you for joining us love to have your comments please make sure you leave them below the screen and we'll see you in the next program bye for now mm -hmm.